welcome to lecture 9 of mechanics of materials. In the last lecture we saw about different state of stresses, uniaxial state of stress wherein the stress is applied only along one direction. For example, this bar being pulled like this is an example of a uniaxial state of stress. The next state of stress that we saw was a biaxial state of stress wherein the stress was applied on two orthogonal directions. Basically, you can pull like this and pull in this direction also. Next state of stress that we saw was a pure shear state of stress that is we said that if there exists a plane in which there are no normal stresses, but only shear stresses are present that is called as a pure shear stress. Even in that state of stress there will be a plane in which there is no shear stress, but there are normal stresses alone ok. There will be the principal direction of the uh, in the along the principal planes there will be only normal stresses and no shear stresses even though the state of stress is a pure shear. Then we saw what is called as an hydrostatic state of stress wherein any plane in the body will will not have a shear stress coming in that plane ok that is called as an hydrostatic state of stress. The next state of stress that we saw was a deuteric state of stress wherein the stress will it will not have a volume change, but there will be only a distortion changes in the body. It will distort the body is like a pure shear state of stress wherein it, it, it is a traceless tensor. So, that tensor is called as a deuteric state of stress ok. We also went ahead and looked at 3D stress analysis ok. We defined the normal stress as the traction component of the traction acting along the normal direction to the plane ok that is called as the normal stress. The component of the traction acting parallel to the plane is called as a shear stress and we found the expressions for the normal and shear stress to be given as written in here. And we also said that we are interested only in the magnitude of the shear stress and the ends you can compute the magnitude of shear stress from the expression given in here. And then we went ahead to maximize the normal stress. In other words, we were interested in finding the plane on which the maximum normal stress occurs and what is this value of the normal stress. That maximization problem led us to two equations when we want sigma n equal to lambda times n and n dot n must be equal to 1. For first equation to have a non trivial solution, non trivial n, we require the determinant of sigma minus lambda identity should be 0. This will result in a characteristic what is called as a characteristic equation, which will be given by a cubic polynomial of the form minus k1 lambda square plus k2 lambda minus k3 equal to 0. This is called as a characteristic equation where k1 is trace of sigma, k2 is 1 half trace sigma square, trace of sigma square minus trace of sigma square and k3 is determinant of sigma ok. Now, this k1, k2, k3 are what are called as the invariance of the stress sensor. In other words, these quantities does not change with what coordinate system you use to represent the stress tensor. Okay. By solving this cubic equation, you will get 3 real roots because sigma is a symmetric tensor, you are assured of 3 real roots. Those 3 real roots are denoted by lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3. Those 3 real roots are denoted by lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and the corresponding directions by obtained by solving this equation sigma n equal to lambda i of n would be n 1, n 2 and n 3 corresponding to lambda 1, lambda 2 or lambda 3 that was substituted for lambda. These are called as the principal directions ok. Now, we will go ahead and we will see a bit more of how to represent the stress in the principal directions and then we will find what is the maximum shear stress that will occur and what plane it occurs and then we will define what is called as the octahedral stress, the stresses on the octahedral plane, the normal and the shear stresses and then we will go and look at equilibrium equations which the stress field has to satisfy ok. This stress tensor was add some representation sigma xx, sigma xy, sigma xz, sigma xy, sigma yy 0 sigma x z 0 sigma z z z. This was a 3 dimension stress state in some chosen coordinate system x y and z.
E x E z. In this coordinate system, this was the representation for the stress. Okay. Now what I can do is I can change the coordinate system, and I I can write the same stress tensor in the coordinate system given by n one. n2 n3 the principal directions okay now i can use the principal directions as a coordinate basis because i know that the principal directions will form an orthonormal set by virtue of the stress tensor being symmetric we know that the principal directions would be orthonormal since stress is symmetric sigma is a symmetric tensor we have been using this we have to show this when you look at the equilibrium equations okay now this was in e x e y e z basis now if i represent the same stress tensor in n1 n2 basis this will be sigma 1 n1 tensor product will be sigma 1 n1 tensor product n1 plus sigma 2 n2 tensor product n2 plus sigma 3 n3 tensor product n3 right because what happens is I am writing it in the principal direction basis, so that will be having this representation. Okay. Now, if I were to represent this in a matrix form, the sigma would be of the form sigma 1 0 0 0 sigma 2 0 0 0 sigma 3. Okay. Because there exists an orthogonal matrix which connects E x E y E z to n 1 n 2 n 3. Okay because both are orthogonal sets you are assured of a transformation matrix that will do that okay now we can define a orthogonal matrix qij which is ei dotted with nj matrix okay then i can get my sigma in the matrix form of sigma in nj basis obtained as this q transpose sigma in e i basis times q matrix okay this will give me this diagonal representation of the uh, stress tensor okay so now having obtained the diagonal representation of the stress tensor next what we want to do is find what is the maximum shear stress that will occur and what plane it will occur Okay, so I am interested in finding find the maximum shear stress and the plane on which it occurs. Okay, now the maximum shear stress expression tau max or the shear stress expression is given by norm of traction acting along a particular normal square minus sigma n square okay so let's deal with the representation of the stress in the principal directions so let's assume that m is the normal to the plane to the plane on which maximum shear stress occurs and m is given by m1 n1 plus m2 n2 plus m3 n3 such that m3 is square root of 1 minus m1 square minus m2 square okay now then you can find what is the shear stress acting on that plane n okay the shear stress on this plane would be tau of m squared would be sigma 1 m1 n1 plus sigma 2 m2 n2 plus sigma 3 m3 n3 
norm of this vector squared minus the normal stress acting on that plane which would be sigma 1 m 1 square plus sigma 2 m 2 square plus sigma 3 m 3 square. Okay. Now, this is nothing but sigma 1 whole squared this is sigma 1 m 1 squared plus sigma 2 m 2 squared plus sigma 3 m 3 squared minus sigma 1 m 1 square plus sigma 2 m 2 square plus sigma 3 m 3 square the whole square okay that is tau of m square okay now what i want is i want to find m1 and m2 such that find m1 and m2 1 as maximum value okay this so, would imply that i would set dou t m squared by dou m 1 to be equal to the derivative of the shear stress magnitude by dou m 2 to be equal to 0. I will get two equations involving m 1 and m 2 which I have to solve. I have to use here the fact that m 3 is given by this expression in here okay, and I have to solve for m 1 and m 2 from this e two equations wherein I will get that m 1 is plus or minus 1 by root 2, m 2 is plus or minus 1 by root 2 and m 3 is 0 okay. or I can get another set of solution this being a nonlinear equation will be more than one solution. So, 1 by root 2 0 plus or minus 1 by root 2 or 0 plus or minus 1 by root 2 plus or minus 1 by root 2. These are the possible solution that I will get. Okay. If I know that if sigma 1 is greater than sigma 2 greater than sigma 3 if greater than sigma 3 then I will get the solution which is given here this will be the tau max solution the, the direction will give me tau max otherwise I do, these are the possible 12 solutions which I have to substitute in the expression 1 and find tau max corresponding to those 12 solutions and then pick which one gives me the maximum shear stress. Okay. If I assume that this is the case then I know that the solution would be this will imply m1 is plus or minus 1 by root 2, m2 is 0 and m3 is plus or minus 1 by root 2. Okay. Then T m squared would be equal to tau max would be then T m is equal to magnitude of T m equal to tau max would be 1 half of sigma 1 minus sigma 3 okay. sigma 1 minus sigma 3. Okay. In general if I do not have these specifications I will write tau max as 1 half maximum of absolute value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 absolute value of sigma 2 minus sigma 3 absolute value of sigma 1 minus sigma 3. Okay. Now, this corresponds to this case in here sigma 1 minus 3 corresponds to this case in there and this corresponds to this case in here. Okay. So, depending upon which set you get you will get one of the solutions here. Okay. I am not going to do the algebra here you can look up advanced solid mechanics in NPTEL notes for going through the detailed algebra. 
okay in the web course okay now what is the direction or what is the plane on which this maximum shear stress occurs is the next question we want to answer so we found the m1 to be plus or minus 1 by root 2 plus or minus 1 by root 2 as the solution which means m would be plus or minus 1 by root 2 n1 plus n3 in this specific case when sigma 1 is greater than or equal to sigma 2 greater than or equal to sigma 3 ok. So, there are 4 possible planes here the 4 possible planes in the n1 n3 uh, coordinate system is this is n1 no say this is n1 and this is n3 the possible planes are making 45 degrees with respect to each these four planes are the planes on which the maximum shear stress occurs ok. So, tau max will occur like that or it can be occurring like this also ok because you know only the magnitude of the tau max you are finding the maximize the square of the tau max. So, it can occur in either direction ok. Now, uh, you will find that this normal year this normal year is given by n 1 plus n 3 by root 2 whereas, this normal in year is given by minus n 1 plus n 3 by root 2 this normal in year is given by minus n 1 plus n 3 by root 2 and this normal in here is given by n 1 minus n 3 by root 2 ok. Now, all these four normals gives you the same tau max because tau max will occur in pairs complementary shear stresses are to be same sigma x y is same as sigma y x and hence you get these four normal planes ok. Now, I think for the maximum shear stress next I am interested in defining what is called as an octahedral plane.